Welcome back. With us right now is, I want to call him a master photographer <laughs> because he is, Larry Cunningham. Good to see you here today. Ken, thank you for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you here today. And um, today we're going to talk about uh, light, night photography. Very difficult for a lot of people to get. Of course, nowadays most people are walking around with their phones and there's very few phones out there. They may take brilliant day shots, portraits and all. When it comes to tricky lighting, knife photography, that, that'll change a little bit. It's going to change a bit, but they're still way behind really decent cameras, am I right? Well, Ken, it's interesting you bring up that the aspect of night photography being so different because even as many of us uh, drive into our own neighborhood at night, mm -hmm. when there's no moon out, you say, boy, this looks so different. Yeah. Because the light from the moon and the stars does uh, paint the landscape a, a different, it different does. picture. And in a sense, what we're really talking about here is not night photography, but artificial lighting photography or dusk, or, but light. This is what we're talking about, right? Well, yes, and as a photographer, what I like to do is manage the light that yeah. I have, the available light like you see here. Um, this is San Francisco, back San Francisco Bay Bridge. Back mm -hmm. in 2013, the artist uh, Lois Ravila was given a commission to install these LEDs that you see here all from c coast to coast on the, on the Bay Bridge. Right. Now these LEDs are connected to a computer that paints a, an image uh, all all through the through the LED lights. Really, and it moves. Well, he got that installed that in really 2013, cool. and it lasted till 2015, which is when I took this shot here. Um, this was with available light, and you know I was talking to you earlier about managing the light but you get the beautiful reflections off of the water from the LEDs that mm -hmm. were on the uh, bridge, plus you get this nice warm texture from the lights, uh, clouds uh, that were reflecting on it. So this is the shot back in 2015 that I took before they decommissioned the lights because ah. the artist got uh, an authorization to install some, some newer, better lights, okay. which they uh, approved, the city council's approved, and they pulled, 2015 was the last time these lights were on, so I went up specifically just to shoot this. Two nights later, let's talk about managing light. Okay, now we have the, should we go to the next? Let's go photo? to the next we'll slide. go to the next photo here. Now look, <laughs> look at this. Now, what's different here is a movie crew showed up shooting a serial, um, and they wanted to use the Bay Bridge as a backdrop. Mm -hmm. They, they brought in an 18-wheeler that had a hydraulic arm and brought up a series of lights just like you would have at, a, at the baseball game, but they were directional. So they lit this whole bridge up, and you can see just the difference in the, in the quality of the light. Now the, the uh, stone looks yeah. so much grayer. When you go, go back to the other picture, you know, it, it, this just took out the warmth. It and did. Now, uh, were you, did you know that movie crew was coming in or was no, just happenstance? No, I just happened to be okay. there. It's a once in a lifetime shot. Yeah, so look at the difference here. And you're standing on the wharf, this treasure island over there, and in the background is the East Bay. Yep. So now we'll go to the next shot. Wow. <laughs> yeah, quite a difference. Yeah. Now, now, Ken, let's go forward now in time when the okay. new LEDs got installed. Okay, so to the next photo? Yep, okay, go, we'll to, the go next, to the next yeah. photo. And now we're talking about the celebration that these were the new series of lights mm -hmm. for the Bay Bridge. But I got, uh, I, I came up specifically just to shoot this one day because it was the, the grand opening. Okay. You know, back in 2016 when they had the, uh, the new lights. And unfortunately, not unfortunately, but when we all take pictures, you're taking that light at that one moment in time. Correct, yeah. These lights are moving right. all the right. time, and you get these beautiful patterns, you get fish, you get So they whales. still have the movement of the lights. Yes. I haven't seen those. As yes. often as I've been up there, I haven't seen it at night. Interesting. Well, it's, it's quite impressive. Um, it was worth, you know, it, three years of photographing this. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, let's, let's talk more about light as we move on to okay. the, our well, next. Let's go to the next uh, photo here. And this most is beautiful. Is this Joshua Tree or? Well, 
You're close, but let's go up to Bishop. Okay, Take a got left it, Bristol. Up on, oh, yeah. This is Bristol Cone Pine. Yes, there we are, okay. And, well, we started out in the daytime, it was 95 degrees. It snowed that night at 11,000 feet where I took this picture That's here. That's amazing. And you have to wait for the Milky Way to come up mm -hmm. because it's, it's seasonal. It starts, the Milky Way starts out flatter yeah. early, in the, early in the season, then rises up. So that's about two o'clock in the morning. Wow. Where were you, were, were you parked over there? Just stay well, in your car? <laughs> you, <laughs> How'd you get out there at two in the morning? You, you, a, lot of the, a lot of the younger kids hike up. Okay. I drove up. Okay. <laughs> All right. But this is about 11,000 feet, and it got down to, uh, it was cold enough to snow. Yeah, and it's quite a drive up there. I've never been on, up, up to there, but uh, Well, you can I, get I, to I Patriarch, go but going to Matriarch, which is the top where you can see it's, the weather conditions are so much more brutal. Yeah. These trees are leaning over for a reason. It's, it's, it's and very. And of course, these trees, I think the oldest one is 3,000 years 5, old? 5,000. 5,000 years old at 11,000. the 11, oldest 000. documented living. Yes. Not, but, I know the one that's the oldest has like a fencing around it, am I right? I, I didn't like, see it when I was up there, okay. but there are very specific areas yeah. marked off. Amazing. Yeah. Just a beautiful, it's, beautiful It's photo. amazing, please. Now, to me, it look, this looks like it's a Christmas photo. It looks like a Christmas tree. Well, Explain yes. Explain this to me. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, we specifically went up to get the oldest tree, which was the bristle cone right. pine. But while we're setting up doing our time lapses, it's in November. So I'm looking for my Christmas card picture. So I brought out the lights, the tea lights, put them on, installed, you know, just placed them on the tree, and that was my Christmas card for that year. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. It's all That's about a... managing the light because this was a, actually a long exposure. Yeah. Where I lit up the tree, I brought my own light, mm -hmm. I lit up the okay, tree. Okay, so you have a separate light off shot that is lighting up the large exactly, tree. Okay. Exactly. And then you took like little, those because little see, LED lights. That, managing yeah. the light, I want to see the stars come in, but also want the That's tree amazing. to, to the beautiful, you know, silhouette of the tree yeah. there as well. And what makes this to me such a technically great shot is that you have your, your foreground Christmas tree you have the back, you have the middle ground, which is the much larger tree flooded with light, and yet you're still able to, get, to bring in the, uh, the stars well, without, can, without blowing out any yes, of that. And, yeah. and you bring up the, the number one challenge for any photographer, and that's composition. Mm -hmm. Where will the Milky Way be at two o'clock in the morning? You know, what lighting do I have? Right. And what lighting do I want to bring in to make it a great shot? Yeah, exactly. So I bring in my own lights, I hike in with my own light. Yeah. So, um, let's go to the next shot here. And on this one, uh, this uh, looks like a familiar place. This is the Arch, the and uh, Utah. It's up at Moab in U Utah. Okay, Canyon Lands. Okay, and it it to me what you're doing. I could be totally wrong here. Is you're you're laying down. You've got the camera pointed up through the arch for a long exposure. Is that what you're doing? Multiple long exposures. Ah. The, the photographers call this star trails because okay. you take, this, take a series of long exposures and stitch them together. Okay. We have now you know, uh, digital cameras. We also right. have the digital software that does that for us. Right. It stitches it together. But the key piece here is that we, we photographers bring in our own light mm -hmm. and light up the arches so that the, the long exposure captures the stars, but it also captures the, 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 the arches and the canyons. Okay. The light is on so dim. Is it? Oh, okay, because. Because it's a 30, yeah. s at least a 30 second exposure. So how many exposures did you take to stitch these together? Would, in uh, what course of time? Were you there an hour, Well, this takes five two, hours? two or three hours okay. to collect uh, a nice star trail that. Okay. Are yeah. there other photographers doing it at the same oh, time? Oh, yes, yes. Okay, so you all got your cameras well, down there? And most of the time when you're out at night, you usually tra you know, travel with a buddy. You, you have yeah. a buddy photographer because there's a lot of things that can happen at night photography. Right. Yeah. All right, let's go to the next photo here. And uh, now, again, we see the arch here and yes. uh, the Milky Way. Are these people, like, hiking with flashlights or something? Well, what's, what's there's always a here? story with every yeah. image. At the end of taking some of those earlier shots, the Milky Way had already come up, and our one of our instructors has, as most of the astro and photographers do, they have a red uh, headlight on so it doesn't 
um, mm -hmm. cause your eyes to right. close down. Yeah. So he left his headlight on and he walked out and got this trail of red light. Wow, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> that's a really, really kind of a cool Great shot. shot. Now, uh, Yosemite? Yes, sir. Okay. This and is a, yeah, I, I gotta interrupt yep. you here because when I first saw this photo, it brought back the, uh, I, uh, the memories, uh, not that I ever saw this because it ended years and years ago You're when right. they used to have the firefall. Yes. And for people who don't know that, they would, long before they worried so much about different things, people would get on top of Half Dome, I Half believe, Dome. and yeah. uh, they would light logs on fire and exactly. they'd throw them over and they'd create this effect. But tell us about this. This is something different. Totally. Well, what you remember is exactly right. However, in February, um, of every year, the Earth geometry is such that it casts light through a very narrow slot up here and creates this golden mm -hmm. waterfall. This is, this is all natural because wow. it, every element has to be perfect to manage the light. There has to be enough contamination in the, the light as the sun goes through mm -hmm. the Earth's atmosphere to create this golden Dawn effect. or dusk? It's right, um, right close to dawn, or okay. dusk rather, Okay. right close to dusk. I have taken a time lapse of that and you can actually see the sun marching across. Wow. And paints that picture. So the, the sun is, is going through other peaks and all and just like a yes, sliver of it. And there's can you see this with, with just your eyes? Does it look naked yellow? Eye. Like yes, the, you can. It does, wow, yeah. that's incredible. The day we were there, um, we, it took us two days to get this shot. Mm -hmm. But the day we were there, um, I think your, our local Channel 7 announced it on a Friday. Saturday, there were 10,000 photographers there. In, really? Yeah, there was enough camera gear to pay off the national debt. So what falls of this? This is Horsetail Falls. Okay, I'm not familiar somebody, with that one. Well, they call it Horsetail Falls, but it is Firefall. Okay, and where is this, where are you standing for this We're shot? standing on the other side of the Merced River. Okay. All right, so. Creek by that time. Yeah, but exactly. If you don't have enough water. But right now, with the waterfall yeah. that we've had you know, here in California, it's still flowing. Yeah, that's amazing. But there's years. Beautiful photo. Thank you. I love Thank this. You. Uh, and we'll look at the next one here. And where is this? Is this Yosemite? No. Or somewhere else? I don't know where this is at all. Okay, this is, Hav this is on ha Havasu tribal land. Okay. In the Grand Canyon. Wow, that's beautiful. It, is only accessible by one of three ways. Wow. You can only get in there by hiking in, helicopter, or take a horse in. It's on tribal lands. We have permission to, to come in and fo photograph. Mm -hmm. And I brought in uh, extra lights to get the accent of the waterfall itself, as well as get the stars in the background. Now, when you bring in extra lights like this, are, uh, are they battery operated? Do you have to bring in a huge battery or Nowadays with LED lights, you can keep them on long enough to flood you're, this area. You're right. Uh, they are LED and the LEDs are so much more efficient that I don't have to have a huge battery. Okay. And yeah, beautiful. And remember, they're very, very dim because these are long That's exposures. Yeah. Did you hike in? How, how'd you get in? Uh, I took a horse down. Did you really? Yeah. It's actually a mule. And, and you had a guide taking you had down? A guide oh, taking oh, us down. Fun. My buddy took a horse and we helicoptered out. Oh, how fun. Yeah. That would have been a lot it's, of fun. It's an amazing, magical place, and there's seven or eight just phenomenal waterfalls. Wow. Where is this on the tribal land? What part of? Uh, Grand Canyon, the West, West Rim, Havasu, West, okay. Havasu, well, they call it ha Lake Havasu, but it's on Havasu tribal lands. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very Gorgeous good. place. Yeah, cool. This was, this was on my bucket list, so I finally got to shoot that. Yeah, very nice. Okay, let's look at the next photo here. And uh, this, now, if I didn't know where this was, to me it looks like some out in Arizona or Scottsdale or something like that. I don't know if I'm close or Sedona. Where is this? This is right here in Borrego. Really? Okay. This is the wow. Borrego Springs Visitor Center. Wow. So we lit up the, the visitor center with the, the light that we bring in mm -hmm. because we're managing the light again, taking our star trails, and we wanted to to accent the beautiful visitor center there. It's really a, nice. It's, so it's you did gorgeous. the same thing here, several exposures of a course of, of Correct. a few hours. To make the star and trails. And together. we point at Polaris, which you can see up there in the center. Yeah. Because that stays, you know, it stays centered. Yeah, really nice. All right, next photo. And uh, again, this yeah. is 
this is out at Borrego Springs, and this is two o'clock in the morning. What you don't see is the headlights of the artist, Ricardo Borrego, that drove up and said, what are you doing to my sculpture? And of course, we all had our cameras out and said, we're taking pictures of the, sun, of the Milky Way with your gorgeous stagecoach. And we got to meet the artist. Wow. Yeah. Very he was, nice. He was very, we showed him the pictures we were taking on our, on the back, now our, you know, our, our digital camera. That is really neat. Yeah, cool. I've, I, I haven't seen this um, actual, I haven't been out there for this, but along uh, the drive from uh, Julian up to Temecula along the 79, you go past, past this place, I don't know what it is, and there's dozens and dozens of these. Maybe it's yeah. his shop or something. They all look like this. Well, he had to move his shop. Okay. Uh, the right. night we met him, he was in the process of getting everything together and moving seven miles down to uh, a new place, an, a new lot that he had. Okay, but yeah, there were dozens of yes. these horses and mules, and, and we were like, whoa, what is this place? Well, and Ken, yeah. he's, he's done 130 of these sculptures out in the Borrego Desert. Okay, yeah, because there were a lot at this place, and it, you know, it was open to the public. We didn't yeah. stop because we were just kind of like astonished, what is this place? Very cool. All right, I think we got a, a couple more here. Beautiful. It, okay. it, to me, it, you know, when I looked at this before, you captured almost a look of, of like the heavens coming down and, and meeting the, the, these uh, palms here. That's what it looked, and lighting them up. I don't know, that's what it looked like to me. Well, you're very close because this, this is the 14 Palms orchid, Orchard that's behind the visitor center. If you drive up the road to the visitor center, okay. after we photographed the visitor center, we lit up this, the, this orchard mm -hmm. of palm trees and that's the shot we got. Very nice. And I think there's another one. I, I, I kind of lost track how many more. Okay, this we're, one. Now we're back out to Joshua Yeah, Tree. this is cool. Obviously somebody with their headlamp on. Yes, that was moi. Oh, My yeah. wife calls it the aliens landing as I was looking up for That's the aliens. That's what it looks like. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is really neat. So do you have a, a light down here at the bottom shining up at the tree? Yes, okay. yes you do. Again, it's so, so light. That How you long don't want did to you overpower. have to stand there motionless like that? 30 seconds. Oh, wow. Okay. So I did some repelling out at Joshua Tree, and we again, the contrast of the red lights with the blue light, you know, you're, contra you're balancing different kinds now, of light. Now, did you light up the Joshua Tree there? Because it looks purplish, at least in the well, photo. Well, it does because of my headlight is reflecting off of the... Ah. Off of the rock back onto the tree. Very cool. Didn't have to light it, it was all natural. Wow. Yeah. That is, that is amazing and uh, really cool. Okay. And, and then this, is this some more of these sculptures? There's the more sculptures gentleman? out okay. at Borrego, but what I did it was yeah. light paint behind it with, okay. with the, an instrument that lets me create the flame as I expose that for 30 seconds. Is it just like a, a lightsaber it's a kind light, of stick? Or? It's a light bar, yeah. Okay, all right, very cool. So uh, this one, is it the same way? And I, you know, it's I've seen way. this, uh, other artists do this before, yes. this technique. It, this and this is it, totally different. Look how smooth this is. Well, it is uh, a, a way of moving light and motion to create a background okay. for these two ladies that we're photographing. And again, uh, are these sparklers or something? This is. Uh, this looks like actual, uh, uh, you know, like, you know, when I'm talking about the uh, sparklers on, on Fourth of July type. Of yes, thing. That's but what this is a like. little different technique that photographers use. It's actually steel wool that's ignited and you spin it in a circle in a cave. I was in a cave when I shot wow. this. So I did it all with a remote control light because that was me and this is three in one frame. I got three exposures of wow. the light all in one and frame. And bits go off, is that what you're seeing there? Yeah. Very neat. You spin it and as it, this is a little closer to home. This is a, this is a five minute exposure at dusk, what's called the blue hour. Uh -huh. and you put a neutral density, a number 10 neutral density, and you open up your lens all the way for five minutes. Wow. And you get that beautiful blue light and the sunset. Very cool. It's managing the light. It is. It is. Yeah, very nice. And uh, it's nice that this is, the tide pool is close to home here. That's, that was La Jolla. Okay, and look at this. Where is this? Treasure this Island, here? Right, here is in our, right here in our backyard. Wow, beautiful. Yeah. With the nice We're so fortunate here. to live here in the, on the west coast where we have such great yeah. Oceans, landscapes, and we get the fantastic yeah, sunsets. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. And I love the kids nice playing with the, with the sandcastles. Yeah. So I actually had to protect, 
protect this to keep the dogs and, and other people from destroying it. So I put my tripod over it until the sun went down and I, I shot this. Yeah, very nice. I like that. And uh, this is great. Where is this at? Well, I'm going to take you a little bit north to Vegas. This okay. is this is called the uh, Neon Museum. Oh, sure. Yes. And they collect, they yes. have collected for years yeah. the, the old signs that were in Vegas. Right. And the city actually restored the silver slipper and this is out in the the uh, the median where the traffic is but when I first took this shot there was no lights on the on the silver slipper so I went back in and asked him said well the city doesn't turn the light on until eight o'clock so I went back out and shot it again oh okay very nice yeah I like that managing the light and this is the this spectrum is right, of course yep this is right here in our own backyard the beautiful carousel along with the the lighted fountain and waterfalls it was just it's a photographer as attraction. And we're back out to Toronto with the carbon, calcium carbon pinnacles that rise up there. And we're, I was lucky to get, well, while we were waiting, before we could get this shot, the next shot shows what happens in the background before. Okay. It's reflected. This is, the next shot is the reflection of off of the clouds in wow. the back that as the sun sets. That is An beautiful. hour later was the other shot. Yeah. But this is what happened. I, I slammed on the brakes and I told everybody, I said, get out of the car, get this shot while we can because it, it'll only last about three yeah. minutes. But this beautiful cascade of reds through the sky was gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. Managing the light. Yes, and there we are. Last but not least. Back you know, home. Yep, yeah, back home. Victoria Tower yeah. down at the end of uh, Very Poppy nice. Street. Well, uh, just, just briefly, uh, one camera you use here, you use several cameras, different lenses. Yes, to all of those. Okay, all right. um, I shoot primarily Nikon, okay. uh, and most night photographers look at the camera for the sensor that's in right. it, and they want a sensor that uh, is very sensitive, to, you know, to low light, so mm -hmm. we can have long exposures without a lot of noise. Okay, very nice, Larry. Uh, he's going to come back with us another time in the future, talk about drone photography. Am I right? Yes, and we have some beautiful shots that we've taken right here in our own community. That'll be fantastic. Thank you very much. This enjoyed it. Wonderful. I, I enjoyed it very Thank much. You. Absolutely gorgeous. And uh, we'll have it, like I said, back on again. And it, it, it's great. I mean, even for you folks, uh, and I'm sure you would agree with this, you're only like somebody like me using uh, my phone camera. The number one thing is composition. Everything else it. will come later. You nailed it right on the head yeah. because it is composition. It is, definitely. Good to see you. Likewise. All Thank right. you. We'll be right back.